Shalom Orot, por favor, te mutará. Today is uh, the 17th of Elul. We are getting very close to Rosh Hashanah. And uh, we will have just a couple of sessions in our Tamutura before Rosh Hashanah. So I want to give you some of the uh, themes that uh, um, we should teach in Rosh Hashanah at different levels, obviously. I'm going to speak in general. I'm going to speak to you, the Morot, uh, and you will have to um, pick and choose what uh, what uh, belongs where, to which uh, grade it belongs, the subjects. And of course, uh, you, you are the experts in uh, in knowing how to deliver the message to the uh, to the students or to our beloved students. So let me start. I'm going to share with you the screen and show you um, the the order that I uh, conceive for for this class. I want to show you basically uh, in in hierarchical order uh, what is Mina Torah, what is written. Uh, about Rosh Hashanah in the Torah, with uh, obviously the the main source of his of it is a pasuk uh, in the Torah. Uh, what mitzvah is there? How is Rosh Hashanah described? Then we go to Nevi'im. What do we find in the different prophets about uh, Rosh Hashanah? Uh, then we go to Ketuvim. What is in Ketuvim, specifically in the book of Tehilim about Rosh Hashanah. And then we go to Hazal, what the rabbis, Hazal means the rabbis of the Mishnah and the Gemara, Chachamim from the year zero to the year 500, let's say. Um, they, they are the foundation of uh, of the Talmud, which is the foundation of the Lacha, which is the foundation of Judaism. Uh, and only then we go to some Minagim, some of the uh, traditions and, and customs, some Ashkenazi customs and Sephardi customs, etc. Uh, so let's go, let's let's proceed. I want to share with you the the screen and start from the beginning. So first and more important, we will see now the uh, the foundational pasuk of Rosh Hashanah in the Sefer Bamidvar. Uh, 29 one as you know the month of Tishri uh, it, it it begins the year there but it's different from the Gregorian calendar that where the first month of the months is also the first month of the year January is the first month of the month and also the first month of the year but in our case our first month of the month Chodesh Arishon is Nisan so Chodesh Hashavi is the beginning of the year, but is the um, the seventh month. It's like you know, it's like you say, okay, the school year begins actually in September, right? Uh, so that's that's the idea. Uvachodesh Shavii in the seventh month, which is the month of Tishri, beechad lachodesh at the beginning of, of the month, which is besides Rosh Chodesh, the only holiday that uh, starts in in Rosh Chodesh. Mikra Kodesh Yelachem, Mikra Kodesh means it's going to be a Yom Tov. Kol Melechet Avodarot Asu. We are, we cannot do anything the same as Yom Tov. Almost a Shabbat, except for a few things like uh, carrying even without a roof outside or uh, anything that has to do with cooking. But it, here, here there is uh, the, the specific mitzvah of Rosh Hashanah. Yom Teruah Yelachem. This is a day for the teruah, or in that day you will have to make or perform the teruah. And now we go to Torah Sheve Alpe. Now Torah Sheve Alpe means the explanation of the, specifically of the mitzvot of the Torah. And in this case, Yom Teruah Yelachem, there, is, there are no details here of what teruah means. Obviously we already know, but how, what was the gen genesis of this? I'm going to uh, explain it to you in a second. Uh, so Harambam, for example, explains, uh, you know, Lishmoa uh, called Shofar or Rosh Hashanah, that this teruah means the uh, sounding of the Shofar, which generically is called teruah. Lishmoa Shofar or Rosh Hashanah is a mitzvah. Shenemar Yom Teruah Yelachem, a day of teruah you should have. So right now we're going to see a little bit of the details of this 
um, of this mitzvah, also provided, obviously, by the Torah Sheve Alpeh, by the Mishnah, by the Chachamim, and then developed into the Alaha. So first of all, what type of shofar uh, do we use? What is shofar? Uh, there, is, there is another instrument, which is called Chatzotzrot, uh, uh, which is like trumpets. So Teruah could be also referring to that, but the Torah Sheve Alpeh explains and that actually refers uh, to the uh, to the horn of an animal, uh, and there are many animals, of course. But let me let me give you just three uh, examples. So the one that we use is the ram's uh, shofar. Is uh, this one? Is the ram shofar? Let me see if I can show you the ram itself. One second. One second. One second. Let me see here. This is um, I don't know why this happened. Okay, so that's the Rams shofar. Uh, that's the first uh, first type of shofar. This is the one that we that we use, and the one that we should use. Uh, then besides the Rams Shofar, there are other Shofarot like the uh, Antelope Shofar uh, that uh, is very popular because it has uh, a very nice uh, sound and it looks amazing, but uh, it's not uh, it's not kasher for Rosh Hashanah, at least for our Rambam, <clears throat> and also for Rabbi Yosef Karo, for Rosh Aruch, is only possible to use that antelope shofar, the long shofar, if you don't have other shofar. But Baruch Hashem, we all have the Ram shofarot, and this is the one that we use. It also reminds us of Akedat Ishak, that uh, when Borei Olam told Abraham Avinu not to do the Akedah, he also uh, he, he found then a Ram um, with these horns uh, stuck in a um, in a in a bush, so he did uh, the a korban for Hashem. So that also this shofar reminds us of Akedat um, Ishak. Uh, obviously, there is another horn, like uh, for example uh, a bull horn, and uh, that is absolutely no no. Among other things, uh, because that will remind us of the Cheta Egel of the gold sin of the golden calf. So these are the three let's say, horns, animal horns that people know. Uh, I repeat, the rams, shofar is the one that we use. What are the voices of the shofar? So the voices of the shofar, um, we have the first voice is tekia, which is a long voice without interruption. Tu. Then we have shevarim, tu, tu, tu. And then we have uh, teruah. Tu, 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 which is supposed to be like nine small voices. These three voices, they should have like the same length. And um, it's very funny uh, also how to uh, teach the children how to uh, blow the shofar. I am going to uh, to do that in the Huerta Mutera, but very briefly, um, it depends on a couple of things. First of all, you don't have to blow the shofar because nothing happens. It's like uh, blowing a, a or playing a trumpet. You have to go like this, and then you have to position the shofar in the right direction. Okay, and then you go like the kia, shevarim, anterua. So those are an exa examples of the how we blow the shofar. Uh, now, let's go to another question. Why do we blow the shofar in Rosh Hashanah? Uh, I'm going to read for you something from my Maimonides, which is uh, very enlightening. Afal pishetekiyat shofar Rosh Hashanah, gezerat hakatuv. So it says, our mom says that there is no explicit explanation in the Torah why we should uh, blow the shofar. Sorry, what is the reason for the shofar? Is Gizrat Akatu. Akatu means that it was just a commandment given to us without further explanation. There are mitzvot that they have explanations, like the tzitzit, why we wear tzitzit, 
uritem oto uschartem et kol mitzvot Adonai va'asitem otam, which is when you see the seed, you remember the mitzvot, etc. But for Shofar, nothing is said. But Rambam explains, remez yeshbo, uh, the Shofar hints to something. What is the remez? And Rambam explain, explains, uru yeshenim mishenatechem, uh, those who are asleep should wake up from their uh, sleep. Benir damim, those who slumber, akitsu mitarrematetchem, which is also the same idea of uh, awakening, to wake up. Um, it's not a physical sleep, but from um, a more um, uh, spiritual uh, awakening, which means at that moment, we have to remember Bore Olam, remember what are we doing in this world. Uh, that's the spiritual awakening. We have to focus on the important things of life because all the time we uh, procrastinate the the goals of life because we are dealing with more urgent, urgent things. So that's the this is the opportunity to think about what are we doing in this world. And Behipsu Bemaasechem, and also. Uh, how our lives are reflected in what we do. So we have to in in introspect. Are we doing the right thing? Are we orienting ourselves in the right direction or not? And obviously we have to go back to Boreolam, that's Teshuva, right? Uh, repent uh, from abandoning Boreolam and going back to him. And remember who created you. Remember creation. Remember why Am I here? So that's more or less the um, the shofar as explained by Haramam. So that's take care of the you know the mitzvah of shofar, um, uh, which is in the Torah, and this is the primary uh, source of the primary mitzvah. This is the most important mitzvah of Rosh Hashanah. Then we go to Nevi'im. The next step is Nevi'im. Nevi'im means the prophets. Um, and in this case, to explain to you uh, the idea that our Chachamim said at, and how it is expressed in the prophets, let me let me remind you of something that it's not very very known, but it um, uh, this expression of the Chachamim created a whole ritual of uh, of uh, how we. Um, uh, remember or, or, or actually um, conceive or formulate Rosh Hashanah in synagogue. So let me uh, show you this foundational idea. Chachamim said, Shalosh Nashim Mifkedu Berosh Hashanah. Sarah, Rachel, Vechana. Three women conceived after being barren for many years. They couldn't have children, but they finally conceived. Uh, in Rosh Hashanah, and we remember them. One is Sarah, Sarah, the, um, the, uh, Abraham's uh, wife, and the, the the first matriarch of the Jewish people. As you know, she was barren for many many years, and then miraculously, Borei Olam intervened and changed the Gezerah, changed the nature of uh, uh, of uh, Sarah, and uh, Abraham and Sarah had uh, Ishak, had a baby Ishak. All right. Then the second one is Rachel, Rachel Imenu. Also, as you know, she couldn't have children; she was barren. Uh, and uh, uh, after uh, a while, she had uh, a baby. She had uh, Yosef, and also Hannah, who was the mother of Shemuel. You all know the um, the story of Hannah and Penina, Elkanah, etc. She also conceived in Rosh Hashanah. So. These three women, Shalosh, Nashim, Nifkedu, Baruch Hashanah, Sarah, Rachel, Vechana. Now, how is this uh, theme uh, expressed in Rosh Hashanah? Uh, uh, actually, in what we read in the Torah and in the Haftarot of Rosh Hashanah. So see how important this is that Chachamim, from all other uh, texts that could have been chosen uh, to read like the first day of Rosh Hashanah, they actually um, established that we read Vadonai Pakad et Sarah. This is the this this is the parasha that we read in the first day of Rosh Hashanah. 
the one that says that Borei Olam um, remembers Sarah and Vayas Hashem Sarah Kasher Diver and uh, Borei Olam did to Sarah what he has promised her Vatahar and she conceived and finally Vatelet Sarah Abraham Ben Liz Kunav and uh, she she had a baby when Abraham Avinu and, and her were very old already La Moed Asher Diver Oto Elohim in the time that Boreo, that uh, Bore Olam had announced before. So this was uh, a, a miraculous birth. And we remember this in Rosh Hashanah. Um, and the, the, the main subject here is that Bore Olam Meshane Gezerot, which means if, even if there is something um, that naturally should be in, in, in one way, which in this case is negative, a woman is barren, Borei Olam can change that and can make the miracle. Can Borei Olam can cure a person. Borei Olam can take somebody from jail. Borei Olam can um, uh, bless uh, somebody that uh, is needy or poor or, or, or whatever it is. So, or even uh, when there is a gezera, there is like a, some kind of a destiny um, because we deserve a certain punishment. Borei Olam can change it. Uh, and that's a very important message for uh, Rosh Hashanah. And all this is uh, represented uh, by uh, remembering these three women. So the first one, Sarah, as I explained to you, this this has been the, uh, this is the text that Chachamim have chosen to be read in the first day of Rosh Hashanah. Then the Haftarah of the first day of Rosh Hashanah uh, has to do with uh, Hana. Uh, we start from uh, Shemuel, the first chapter of Shemuel, the story of Elkanah. They had two wives, Penina and Hana. And um, uh, Hana couldn't have children, she was barren. And uh, finally, she prayed to Boreolam, and Boreolam granted her uh, a baby. And, uh, and then we have a beautiful, beautiful tefillah. Uh, tefilat Chana. Now, uh, and this is so, so important. The Tefilah that Chana pray to have a baby is really very short. I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, written in, with very short Pesukim, maybe two Pesukim, something like that. But the Tefilah, the main Tefilah of Chana uh, is a Tefilah of gratitude after she had a baby. Usually we do the opposite. We pray a lot. When we are in need of something, we need a miracle from Boreola, somebody is sick or there is a need for something, we pray a lot. But then at the moment of being grateful to Boreola, after we were granted our wish, we might be a little less enthusiastic. This text, this after that, teaches us the, the opposite, that our, uh, our gratitude should exceed the the enthusiasm of, uh, uh, of of the prayer that we do when we ask for wishes. So the importance of being grateful to Borei Olam. Uh, it is also um, uh, worth to notice that uh, in, in this case, it's a woman, the one that actually developed the, one of the most structures of the first structure tefillah in the entire Tanakh and the Tefillat Hana is the Tefillah uh, that uh, serves as a model for no less than the Amidah, the most important prayer that we pray every day, Shemona Esre, is based structurally and, and more, even the way we say the Tefillah, etc., is modeled after Tefillat Hana. So that's a very critical um, uh, subject, and uh, it is here in Rosh Hashanah, all right? And finally, uh, going to the Nevi'im again, the second day of Rosh Hashanah, uh, we read the Aftarah uh, of Irmiah, where uh, in, in the middle of that Aftarah is mentioned Rachel Imenu, and, uh, and um, Kol Baraman Ishma, Nei Bechi Tamrurim, Rachel Mebaka Albanea. Rachel is like the symbol of the uh, matriarch of Israel that. Uh, is waiting for the Jewish people to come back to Israel. And it's uh, 
uh, waiting for them. So symbolically, she's like a, a crying for their children. And uh, Borei Olam tells uh, Rachel, min ikolech mi bechi beenaich bin dim'a ki esacha lefiulatech. The, don't cry anymore. I'm going to bring your beloved children back. So to, to the uh, barren Rachel, Borel says, don't worry. Um, I'm going to take care of them. I'm going to bring them back to Eres Israel. So this is the motif of Geula, uh, of uh, coming back to Eres Israel uh, and to be back in the, in the land of our patriarchs and our matriarchs. So as you see, um, uh, now I think is better understood why I said that this expression of Hachamim uh, is so consequential for Rosh Hashanah that these three women were, uh, you know, they conceived in Rosh Hashanah and we actually remember them in our synagogue. So when we teach uh, about Sarai Menu, Hannah, or Rachel, and specifically how Borei Olam granted them uh, a child, we are uh, teaching what we are reading in the synagogue at in the day of Rosh Hashanah. So let, let's go back to now something else. One second before before this, I had something else. I'm so sorry. Um, we have one more. Uh, then we have also from Nevi'im here from the prophets, and we have also here, let me go to this to this part. Um, okay, now we go to Tehillim. What do we have in Tehillim about, about Rosh Hashanah? Uh, we have, uh, to do this, okay, here. So let's focus on this, on this page. Uh, Tehillim Pe'alef uh, 4, this is a mismore that we read actually seven times, seven times before uh, the shofar. So it says, Tik'u, this is one pasuk of the of the mismore, the most essential one. Tik'u bajo de shofar bakese leyom hagen, which is the um, blow the shofar um, bachodesh. Chodesh means rosh chodesh, bakese, when the moon is not there, leyom hagenu, and whenever you have the Hag, the Moed, that falls in Rosh Chodesh, which is not Rosh Chodesh, which is Rosh Hashanah. At that moment, when you blow the Shofar Rosh Hashanah, Kihok Israel Hu, Mishpat Lelohei Yaakov. This is the day in which Borei Olam uh, subjects us to uh, to be judged. So that's this is the origin, this is the uh, source of uh, Yom Adin, Rosh Hashanah, as Yomadin, the day in which uh, we are judged by Borei Olam. That's, this is the Pasuk of Tehidim. Kihok l'Israel hu mishpat l'Elohe Yaakov. So uh, indeed, uh, this day, as was elaborated by the rabbis later on in the Mishnah, you know, they said, the Rosh Hashanah, they gave a, a beautiful example of how we are judged and assessed in uh, Rosh Hashanah. Uh, so they explain. Rosh Hashanah, kol ba'e olam, oberim lefanav, kibne marom. All right, what does it mean? And also, they bring a chalivam, a mebine kol ma'asehem, borei olam, examines uh, everyone, and uh, assessed, uh, he assessed the, um, um, all the deeds of, of people. Uh, but this means that borei olam, in Rosh Hashanah, Hashem, uh, examines us as the shepherd examines the sheep every year. So let me explain this to you. Uh, every year or every once in a while, the shepherd um, examines every sheep individually. And he has, with his good eye, he, he just touches the, the sheep a little bit, looks at the sheep, touches the sheep, and immediately decides where each one of these animals is going. So for example, uh, if, if he sees that this animal is is healthy and good and has a good uh, wool, etc. So goes for pediabiribia, goes for reproduction because you want to have this type of animals. If it is that the, the animal has very extra good wool, it will go for shearing, okay, for uh, for that purpose. 
Uh, and if he sees, if the shepherd sees that the animal um, doesn't have good wool and um, uh, it's not good for reproduction, he will go for consume, for shechita. So in a sense, at that um, at that second or, or two, couple of seconds, the, the shepherd decides where every sheep would go and it determines the destiny of the sheep uh, at, that, at that moment. So this is the beautiful example that Hachamim um, have uh, conceived to explain to us what happens to us uh, during Rosh Hashanah. We are examined by Borei Olam according to our ma'asim, according to our deeds, to um, how how did we, how well or not well we performed uh, last year, and then it determines the um, our destiny. Now, as you know, after our destiny is determined by Borei Olam, we still have a chance of the Aseret Yimei Teshuvah, of the days of Teshuvah, one week, actually, and Yom Kippur, obviously, to do Teshuvah and to appeal the verdict. But that's something else. At this moment, Rosh Hashanah is the moment in which Borei Olam is assessing us, examining us, and determine our what what would we what would we deserve um, as we are if we don't do Teshuvah. So, with this beautiful example, Fachamim explained this this to us. Um, all right. Uh, there is another um, a motive, a very important subject that it has to do with this also, but with this concept of Hashem judging us that we call Oreolam in these days the, the, the supreme judge. Now, how do you say in Hebrew the supreme judge? So you say Melech. That's the word Melech. Melech mean, uh, means king, but uh, in the context of Rosh Hashanah, we are focusing on the the role of the king as a judge, because the, the king was actually the the supreme judge of uh, of, of his people in every culture. Uh, I mean, we know Shlomo Melech and the um, the trial of Shlomo Melech, etc. But uh, David, every king was ultimately the judge, and actually one of the few direct interactions that uh, the the king had with his subjects was when he was uh, when he had to adjudicate uh, a case of of his subjects um so we call Hashem melech all the time with this in mind so we change our tefillah and then and, and we say instead of a el kadosh a melech kadosh with that in mind that Hashem is a supreme judge and as a supreme judge he has authority over our lives. He can uh, sentence us. So uh, that's why we, we Chachamim also developed this beautiful uh, metaphor of the of the books that are open right now. And Borei Olam is writing. Uh, they are where we should go, each one of us. Um, so uh, we say this in the Tefillah in various moments, like, Zocheron Lechaim, remind us for life, or describe us for life. Melech Hafez Bachaim. Melech Hafez means something very beautiful. Although you are the Melech, and the Melech, the king, the, the, the supreme judge, uh, has the authority to sentence a person, you are a Melech Hafez Bachaim. You love life. Okay, you don't like to um, uh, sentence your subjects, even when they deserve it. And please inscribe us in the book of life. So these are the motives, and they all come from um, from this uh, pasuk of uh, Teilim, right? Uh, this is the day of the judgment by our uh, king slash uh, judge. Um, we also remember, uh, this is also a motif from Hazar, and all this is our tefillah, as I'm trying to show you. Um, uh, in, in Musaf, we have Zichronot, uh, Malchuyot, Shofarot, which means all these motifs of um, uh, Hashem being the, uh, the, um, uh, the Supreme Judge, Hashem, um, you know, the, the, the Shofar in there to wake us up, and uh, another thing, very important, is that uh, we remember in that day, Hayom Harat Olam, that uh, uh, Adam Arishon, uh, the first 
man, the first human was created, then we are not celebrating the creation of the world in Rosh Hashanah. We celebrate the creation of the world every Shabbat. But in Rosh Hashanah, we are celebrating the creation of Adam Arishon. And in a sense also is today I was created. Today I have to uh, give a report about my life. Is if Boreo Lam's investment in me was worth it or not. That's that's the idea. Uh, there is one tefila uh, composed by Rabbi Akiva that uh, uh, combines these two concepts in a beautiful, beautiful way. Uh, Melech, actually, when we say the word Melech, uh, we should tremble because Melech, Melech means the king, the judge that has authority over my life. And we kind of hint, I, I'm sure this is not something we tell uh, small children, but just for you to know, we kind of hint that Boreo Lam, that our lives are in, in in his hand, literally. We realize this in Rosh Hashanah. We are we are asking for more life. Actually, the 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 end result of all the process of Teshuvah from the beginning of of Elul, actually, until the end of Yom Kippur, should be: Please give me another year of life. This is what we are asking for to Boreo Lam in in in. 100 or more different ways. This is what we are asking from Borei Olam. Chaim, 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 Chaim. Right? Um, now, from one side, Borei Olam is the one that can take away our life. From the other side, Borei Olam is our creator. So how do you say creator, my creator, in a in a personal way? So the way to say it is Avinu. And how do you call Borei Olam that is my king, that he can take my life away? Malkenu. So we, Rabbi Akiva, combine these two things and says, Avinu Malkenu. You are our creator, our father, and you are also our king. You can take life away and you gave life. So obviously, we are always appealing to uh, be judged not by Malkenu, but by Avinu, by our father, right? And we are asking him to uh, give us life. Uh, so those those are the motives, the beautiful motives of Rosh Hashanah as expressed by from the Torah. We saw the shofar, um, the um, you know the intention to wake up spiritually. We saw also uh, the beautiful ideas in the prophets and that are already uh, integrated in our tefilot. Um, uh, you know, and, and, and how Bore Olam is the one that changes Gezerot, we see Bore Olam also as the judge uh, and, uh, and as the shepherd that examines the sheep um, as our king that can take our life away and we we uh, take conscious of this we become more conscious of this in Rosh Hashanah and we also appeal to our father, our creator to give us life. Then we have the um, minhagim, okay. Minhagim means mean customs. They are in the hierarchical order. They are at, at, at the uh, at, at the bottom, let's say, of it. Sometimes I feel that we emphasize too much the minhagim at the expense of the more important, more original motifs that we actually um, um, performed it or remember them in the better case because everything. I just explained to you is either in our tefilot, in Musaf, in the Shofar that we, that we do, in the Aftarot, in Keriyat Torah, in the Pew team that we, that we sing. They are all there. So what are the Minagim, Minagim traditions? Uh, I am going to also present them to you in hierarchical um, in a way, which, which for me means which ones are, which one of these Minagim are more in the uh, Gemara, in the Talmud, and which are the Minagim that develop a little later. So the first one is that at the night, it's like during the day of Rosh Hashanah, we, it's like uh, the, the court is in session in, in the morning. Shofar, all what I explained is during the day of Rosh Hashanah. So Chachamim, many Chachamim in the time of Talmud, they, they said they used to do like a Seder Rosh Hashanah, uh, model, not not exactly, but model, the, the, the word seder, model after seder of, of Pesach, but the idea is is to have some 
um, uh, some food or some fruits, etc., that remind us uh, by their um, by their name, remind us of some some word, and uh, we we, uh, we 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 play with that, and we in a in a good sense, and we ask Bore Olam specifically to spare uh, to rescue us or to protect us, especially from our enemies. So the first five uh, that we we still uh, say them, you know, uh, here I, I have a Sedar Rosh so we take the dates. Uh, and uh, we say, uh, which is Temarim, Tamar, Taf, Mem, So Yira Somine Faneja, Vias Boreolam, Shi Tamu, Yevenu, Beson Enu, Beholi Vacher Ratenu, that may all our enemies disappear, Itamu, uh, Taf, Mem, also Salka, um, uh, Tamar is dead, so we say, um, that the, with the Salka we say, Shi uh, Staleku, Yevenu, Beson Enu, Beholi Vacher Ratenu, that may all our enemies um, be distanced from us. So that's the idea. The first, the first, um, uh, uh, or the first four are are for that. Uh, the the fifth one, Rubia, uh, which is uh, more the uh, the beans. Then we change it a little bit. Uh, Rubia means to multiply, so we say, So we have like from the five, we have four of them where we ask Bore Olam to, um, uh, to uh, three of them actually, sorry, three of them where we ask Bore Olam to help us to get rid of our enemies. Uh, one of them, uh, Kera, which, uh, um, which we ask Bore Olam to uh, ikra roa gezardinenu to uh, you know to eliminate the 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 bad gezerot and then we have one that is irbu zechuyotenu may we have many zechuyot and may you help us borei olam to get rid of all the uh, bad verdict or, or verdicts or bad gezerot with time over time like uh, the, this this five one were like a uh, in the fourth century, in the common era. Uh, then we also have the pomegranate that has a, um, but this is like in the Middle Ages already, maybe the year 1200, uh, that building upon the same motif of Irbu uh, Zahuyotenu. So we also ask Boreolam that may we have Zahuyot. Ka Rimon, may we have Shenye Meleim Mitzvot Ka Rimon, may we be full of mitzvot like the Rimon, uh, like uh, I think our grandmothers used to say that the uh, Rimon de Pomeranian has 613 um, uh, seats. So I, I read I read once that that was the the actual mathematical average of uh, of Pomeranian, but whatever it is, that that's one of them. Then the apple, then the apple, uh, then came the honey, also Shelanu Shana Toba Umetuka. That's actually a late uh, minhag, um, but it was adopted, although it's originally Ashkenazi, but it was adopted by Sephardim uh, too. Uh, and and it's, it's a very nice thing. We just need to realize that Rosh Hashanah shouldn't be seen as the the apples festival and the apples and honey festival should be something a little more profound maybe a little more close to the um, sources to the primary sources that identifies Rosh Hashanah and then we also have obviously the sheep's head that uh, uh, is based on a pasuk that 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 we say that Sheniel Rosh Belores Anav may we be always at the head and not at the uh, tail of of, uh, of peoples, okay, and may we have success. So all all these are like again, do we we wish each other certain things. It's like when we cheer, you know, just for aslaha for the new year or to a couple, a new couple, we cheer and we wish each other uh, this berachot. Obviously, in 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 the days of the of Hazal. 
they were surrounded by enemies everywhere. And the most important thing that they wanted is Boreolam's help to get rid of our enemies. Um, okay, let me finish with the Tashlich. A Tashlich is a, is a late minhag. Um, and let me bring it to you very briefly. What is and what should not be the Tashlich? So the Tashlich is... Uh, um, it's actually based on a, uh, on a pasuk, miel kamocha, no seawon, bebel al pesha, lishirit um, achalato, lo echezita alapo, ki hafez chesedu. So we appeal to Bore Olam, and we say to Bore Olam, we, we believe that Bore Olam, ichvosh avonotenu, he will, um, he will not hold and present our transgressions to us, but the opposite, he will cast or throw to the um, to the depth of the sea, to the bottom of the sea, all the avonot of Bene Israel. So, what does it mean? It means the the actual idea, the right idea of the tashlich is that if we do teshuvah correctly, then Bore um, Olam will not. Uh, keep the records of uh, our uh, wrong deeds. He will actually uh, erase them completely. Uh, and and the expression uh, that is used is like uh, this will this avonot the record of these sins will disappear as if they were in the bottom of the sea. That's that's an expression to say that they will be for uh, forgotten uh, forever. That's that's the idea of. Is, uh, is our uh, um, wish and it's like the promise of, of this Navi that uh, uh, as long as we do Teshuvah, this will happen. Now, what the Tashlich is not is the replacement for Teshuvah. And unfortunately, uh, many people think that and we have to somehow um, uh, explain it correctly from the beginning but many people think that by by doing some some gestures like this, they get rid of all the avonot, they get rid of all the uh, all the transgressions. That's a very childish idea, and not a Jewish idea, because we believe that we have teshuvah. Teshuvah is basically three things. First of all, a karatachet to acknowledge that we have done something something bad, not to be in denial for taking charge of what we have done wrong. Then is vidui, confession, which is the ultimate form of admission of something that I had done wrong. And this is what we do, especially in Yom Kippur. Actually, Akarat Ahet is more the, the beginning of the process of, of Akarat Ahet begins with Tekiyat Shofar, what you understand. This is when we wake up and we start introspecting, okay? We don't do Teshuvah yet. The actual Teshuvah is done in Yom Kippur with the vidui. That we say many, many different times in different ways. Chatati, aviti pashati, alchet shechatati lefanecha, etc. Alchet shechatati lefanecha, alchataim shanachnu, etc. So that's what we do. And then the real test of Teshuvah is the third step, which is azivat achet, which is change. Change of what we do and change of what we are. Okay. So Teshuvah is a very serious process with admission, uh, reparation if I did something bad to another person um, confession and then uh, ultimately a change of my habits change of my my behavior so all this cannot be replaced by obviously by 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 doing like this with your with your jacket uh, or throwing the scenes to the fish that's not the idea so if we explain the tashlich correctly the tashlich should inspire us and reassure us that when we do Teshuvah, all our not will be actually forgiven. Uh, it's not like, you know, in uh, in American law, or whatever law, uh, somebody does something wrong, goes to, goes to jail, and those records are forever. They're never uh, erased from, from, from the public records. So that's not how Borreo Lam does, and that's the, that, that is, should be the main idea uh, behind uh, tashlich, that is that Boreo Lambda is not us. Um, so it should inspire us 
to do Teshuvah. And knowing that Borei Olam loves us and he really wants us to start all over again. There are no records of what happened last year. So uh, that's it. I, I just wanted to uh, give you some uh, some ideas to develop uh, during uh, this uh, this year for Rosh Hashanah. And if you have any um, any questions or any comments, please uh, send them to me to my uh, uh, to directly to my WhatsApp, or you can share them also in our uh, Talmud Torah uh, WhatsApp. Thank you so much.